So as you can see, the S-Bar D2 kit comes with a lot of stuff. And to someone who's never done a project like that could seem extremely overwhelming. We are not professionals. We're gonna use a bunch of resources. Scott comes with a view, uh, adventure in a backpack, Dynamo Ultima posted a video on this. So we're gonna link them all up below and try and do our best of explaining simply and efficiently on how to install the S-Bar D2 heater. Bob's a little concerned. <laughs> we got our heater from Heatso. It's a company based in the UK, but they have all Canadian pricing. Their shipping was incredible. And they've given us a full, complete set. So this is the main unit. This is where the heat side is gonna come out. And then this is the fan, so that's the blower. So the, the cold air will travel through into the combustion and blow hot air out. I think the best way to mount it will be something like that. That's what I've seen a lot of people do. That's how. That's kind of how we did ours. And you attach the big cord onto that with the clamp and then the tube will kind of bend out and shoot the hot air out that way. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna press that black template that's on it, just down, lift that up. Bob's gonna come and clutch with the pencil. I love that. But if you don't have the same mirror, I would get underneath the van and make sure you've got the clearance. Last thing you wanna do is punch through a line or something like that. <laughs> So for the intake and outtake of the heater, you're looking for a one inch bit, which of course we don't have. So we're gonna go with a seven eighths and wish us luck. Woo! Let's party! The kid is insane. Can you go all the way through? Yeah, baby. Come on! Guaranteed everyone's clicked off this video by now, eh? This yeah. guy has no idea what he's doing. The bit is completely destroyed. Sheesh! Uh, my suggestion, folks, is to uh, do a little pre-planning and uh, make sure you have all the correct tools and all the parts needed to install the S-Bar D2 heater. That's a good idea, Bob. General takeaway or key lesson of the day, get the right size bed. It'll save you a lot of time. We got our holes in the bucket. We got our complete set here. I put the rubber gasket on and I'm just starting to prep and get organized. I don't want to spend too much time underneath the van. So I've got our fuel line and I've connected that with a, a rubber fuel line and a clamp. That's gonna go directly to the unit. I've got the bolts that will fasten onto the actual unit itself from below. The uh, intake and the exhaust that, that will be um, running out of the bottom. Are you guys ready for some lunch? Who's not ready for lunch? <laughs> All right. One chickpea salad sandwich and a cold LaCroix later. Ready to get back at it. So that's where the uh, holes have landed. And I've got the four mounting bolts on. It's a dirty job. I wouldn't recommend wearing your nice new black tee. I'm going to take these little uh, fasteners here. That's going to be what holds on our little tuber. So you'll notice you've got two tin metal tubes, whatever you want to call them. One is silver, one is black. The silver one is going to be the uh, exhaust because that's going to deal with heat. So you want to make sure you got the right one. My unit's facing this way, so the last, the back one is the the hot one, and then the intake's the other one. Just try and prop you up here on this drill. All right, let's see that ratchet. This is the second S-Bar we've installed. So the first one I got from like a local shop in Winnipeg actually, when I was with Scott, and they didn't give me all these amazing tools. So it came with like this muffler, which I think is super key, because especially when we're parking stealth, I had no idea how loud the heater actually was. So I'm gonna install this on my dad's. I might actually get one for our van. Um, basically, I'm just gonna cut this line wherever I see fit. So I might, anyway, I'll need to figure out where that's gonna go. I'll cut it and then I'll clamp it on both sides and then uh, direct the exhaust out the back, obviously. Uh, air intake hose here is the black one. It goes along here and it's just mounted underneath this. Uh, flap so it, there's not gonna be any water splashing into there um, And that's where the air will be sucked in It'll come up into the actual combustion uh, Motor and then this is the exhaust out and I've just added this little clamp here that heat so provided um, And going into the muffler so that will deaden the sound and then going back out towards the back of the van We are in good shape now. We need to work on installing the Pump and tapping into the fuel line. Feels good to get out of that van. That it does. Next half, you're under there, right? Eh? This is what your fuel pump will look like. Um, that's where the electrical goes in, and then it sits in this little like rubber housing. Now you're gonna get the smallest size. 
So that's gonna fit on there tight. This is gonna be feeding the S-bar. Okay, this is where things might get a little more technical. The first thing I've done is I've taken our wiring harness. The wiring harness is pretty intense looking. It's actually not that complicated. The main circuit of the wiring harness is this thing. That's obviously gonna plug right into the factory uh, wiring harness that's attached to the S-bar heater. So you don't need to worry about that. And then it splits into three different cables. So the first, all I've done is labeled these quickly. The first one here is the pump. It's the brown green. The next one is the controller. So that's got a whole bunch of wires. Not to worry, apparently we're only gonna use a certain amount. And then this is the battery. This has got a big brown, a red, a red, white, and a red. So to start, I'm just worried about the pump. For the pump, it doesn't matter whether you do green or brown um, into this little slot device thingy. Let me just make sure you guys can see this. Strip back the wire. I put it into this little insert and then you, I'm clamping that on tight to the, to the copper. And then I'm also, just for extra measure, just drop a little bit of solder on there. If I just bind those nicely. And you won't have to worry about that pulling out. Then this little clip thing will slide right into either one or two, doesn't matter. Boom, and you'll hear a little click. But it's gotta go horizontal or vertical. Boom, like that. Yeah, and you want the uh, prongs, if you look at the other end, you want the prongs to be horizontal so that when you feed it onto your pump here, you're gonna be able to snap it in and it's gonna line up with the male parts there, the two, the little fork inside there. Then the last step here is going to be just to close this little house up. And that also, I guess, adds a little bit of protection. And then I'm gonna tape that all um, just to make sure we're nice and waterproof. Moving a little bit too quickly, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut that wire back so I can feed the wire through the bucket um, and that way I don't need to have a big, a big uh, hole in the bucket. I could just have the wires feeding through like a smaller hole and then I'll just reconnect it. So not a big deal. So basically, I'm just gonna cut this off, re fire, feed that through the bucket, reconnect it, and that way I can, I can start to run that to the pump. I just want to show you guys, we're coming out from the fuel line here and we've got the electrical fuel pump wire and I've just connected all that into this black uh, conduit and we're going to chase this all the way along to the other side where the actual fuel pump is. This sprinter actually has an S-bar already in it and that's to heat the engine. Not all sprinters do, but you're lucky if you do have one. Just crawl underneath and have a look. Fuel line right here, so that's the auxiliary. I apologize if this video is a little shaky, but it's very, very difficult to get good shots out of the van here. We've run into a bit of a snag with the tubing, so I gotta figure out exactly uh, what size tube I need based on the Mercedes uh, auxiliary fuel line. So I'm gonna mount everything I can, which is basically the, the pump. Oh, and I connected the other um, side of the, the pump with that black uh, cord. And so I'm just gonna mount that and then kind of take notes and figure out what exactly parts I'm missing and then uh, probably run to like AutoZone or something big to figure that out. What's up? Day two here on the heater install. Hope everybody's having well, it's the same video for you guys, so let's just get into it. Here's what we've done so far. I've just taken the cable. We've got that in the van now. So this is the uh, the wiring harness, the one end that will plug right into the heater. And I've put it all, shoved all that end in there. We've got some extra fuel pump cable that I'll just clean up. And then I've actually put it through conduit, like that black conduit, and just run it underneath the seat into that little hole. And this is just the two cables, the battery and the controller cable in conduit, going back to where our battery bank is and where the display will go. So you're gonna have four battery cables. You've got a 12 gauge brown, a red, a 10 gauge red, and then a, I don't know, probably 16 red and a uh, red white. So the red white we're not gonna use for this install, so you just tape that off. The brown is gonna go directly to the negative and the two reds are gonna go to the positive. So the two reds need to be fused individually. Um, you're gonna use a five amp on the little one and a 20 amp on the bigger one. And I'm gonna put that directly into our fuse block. Heat Soak Kit did come with a little fuse, uh, inline fuse kit you could uh, connect, but 
I'm just gonna use the fuses they provided and hook it up to our Lucy system down here because I've got a lot of room on that bus and it will just keep it simple and a little bit more organized for me. Bob is working on just putting the hole in here. We only had a two, it actually would have been calling for a two and a half with that extra little rib there. Yeah, so this is two and three eighths. It's two and three eighths. It's a little bit too small. And yeah, then you can screw it up, but it's gonna be a set offset. It's not gonna be smooth on here. And the reason why he wanted to mount it there is because that is a flat surface. I mounted mine over here, but it sits a little uneven. So he preferred to, uh, it's his van, his call. Put it at the bottom there. Dynamo Ultima came up with this very cool drawing, which I'll link below somehow. I don't know if it's on, they have a blog or whatever, but you can screenshot that also. And that is how you're gonna do it. If you have a different timer, for example, we use the easy start timer. Um, it could be the same. Chances are the wires are likely the same, but check with your manual to double check that. This S-Bar heater comes available with a whole bunch of different timers or controllers. Okay, I need to run out and get a couple things of Canadian Tire. I'll be back in a minute. I gotta get changed first. Okay, good to go. Just got back from Canadian Tire and Home Depot to get the assorted parts that I need. Now I realize HeatSo sends a kit catered to all audiences. They don't know what kind of van you're working on, so they might have the parts that you need if it's a Dodge or a different size fuel line, stuff like that. But for sprinters, you will need to get extra parts. So you'll need a T-junction and you will need a uh, fuel line. So they did send one piece of fuel line the right size, but the other four sizes were way too big. So what I have to do is get the, more of the fuel, the smaller fuel line that they had sent and get a T-junction um, that will connect to that fuel line. So one that fits really tight. Like that. This is a a T, a quarter inch T, and then I had to buy three three sixteenths IED um, brass hose barbs. So I just put those on the actual T fitting, and then I will connect the hose to each side, and I'll show you where I'm cutting the auxiliary fuel line and how I'm adding basically another port out of that auxiliary fuel line. If your van has the S bar heater you will see a fuel line that comes down and it attached like that. So what I've done is I've cut that and it was actually mounted up and then clipped up. So I just fished it out and it comes to the actual pump that you can see there too. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this T right into those, those lines, that line, and then this line. My beautiful work of art is done. You guys can have a look. You guys can see it. we've got the T there splitting off from the fuel pump. And then this is the auxiliary, uh, the auxiliary line reconnected, and then I've just added that, that T off. So I've just added an extra zip cable into uh, a mounting bracket up there, so there's no extra weight on it. Uh, it's really snug, it shouldn't go anywhere, and it's not hanging any lower than any other uh, cable or anything like that, so the clearance is still the same. This is what it looks like trying to get the shot. This is a good angle. What we do for the shot. <laughs> We're done with under the car. You're done with under the car? Well, let's just hook up the electrical. Sick! Just quickly want to show you how I ran that line. This is the uh, fuel line, and then it's the electrical. And I put that in conduit. I've gone up and above there. Now this is the catalyst converter, so this gets real hot. It's got this metal sheet, so it's not touching there. It's just, you can kind of see it tucked in behind there. And I put like a little clamp there to keep the cable up. It's going near there, it's not touching. We're going along to another clamp. It crosses over the drive shaft. Got another zip tie up there, so I've got lots of clearance where the drive shaft is. And then it goes into this housing, which is near the fuel tank, and comes down and pops out along here which goes into the fuel pump. The fuel pump runs into the T-junction I just did, and then uh, pulls fuel. I understand this video is gonna be a little bit choppy because I'm jumping from step to step, but this is happening in real time. So this is what, it, this is how it, this is, this is what's, this is how the video is gonna happen. So there's a couple options. On our van, um, we didn't get a high altitude kit or a temperature sensor. We just hooked up straight to the remote. Um, and if you're gonna do that, that's cool. But just ignore the temperature sensor that I'm gonna install right now. And I'm not using the little components that they have. I'm just gonna use these really simple um, crimp, crimp connectors. Um, these ones were a little complicated for me to figure out and I don't think there's a, I don't know. Don't, guys, understand that I'm not a professional and I'm just making this video to try and help as many of you as possible. So if I'm doing this wrong, don't beat me up in the comments. Um, 
my understanding is that this will work fine. So I'm connecting my white to my gray and then my brown to my brown white. And then that leaves me, I'm referencing Dynamo Ultima's drawing, which is pretty good, but it gets a little blurry when you zoom in, I have to say, Cody and Lexi, if you could have made that a little sharper, that would have been. Then I'm going to pull my yellow, my blue-white, my brown, and my red. Those four, four guys, the rest of them I'm gonna tape off. And that is gonna hopefully line up somewhere with the remote. That's it, dude. So that completes the installation of electrical. Will it work? I don't know. Like that. Wow, smart. Hey, success! It says Anish. When you first start up, you're gonna hear the fuel pump tick, tick, tick. You hear that? So the fuel pump's ticking, the fan is just blowing some cold air. And like I said, it will take a little bit of time for the fuel to actually travel through the line. If you don't have any conduit on it, you can actually see the fuel traveling. Um, so we're just gonna wait until we start feeling some hot air and then we got heat in the van. All right, great success. We got hot air coming out the vent. I cleaned up that cable. I've set this up for the right, right time, amount of hours it should run. Now we just gotta clean it up, mount it. We're gonna figure out where to put this. This is the temperature sensor, so we might like mount it on the wall there. Whew. Great success. No way. Yeah, dude, high five. You smashed it? Boom. God, I'm so proud of you. Okay, so that completes our how-to video on the S-Bar D2. I hope you guys found that helpful. I know it was a little bit more techy than we usually do, but I had a lot of struggles trying to find a solid video that would explain every single step. So you can just pause, watch what I did, and hopefully you'll be able to install one yourself. Hold, hold on one second. I'm just retiring this unit here. Just, uh, <laughs> so we won't be needing this anymore.